hi and welcome to the ceramics detailing channel we've got a new van it is absolutely sensational i've just fin finished the fit out really proud of it just want to show you guys around it so i'm a firm believer that in business your business space whether that be a workshop a retail store an office space it doesn't matter what it is it definitely reflects the person within the business and how the business is run i'm a firm believer of that there's no different with regard to mobile valeting or detailing as well it doesn't matter how much money you've got and obviously this kind of van costs a lot of money but even on a tight budget you need to make that mobile detailing van or trailer whether you're using a trailer or a van you need to make it look as professional as possible that's what I've achieved here. Obviously the van was expensive, but you'll see from the video, the fit out wasn't that expensive at all. It just needed a little bit of uh, thought process to get it looking as professional as possible. And of course, it needs to work as well. It needs to be functional. So I'm going to show you around the outside of the van first, show you the front of the van, and then we'll go to the back and I'll show you the uh, setup, the fit out. I've fitted this out personally, so it's been all my work, apart from the floor, which is a good mate of mine, Darren Carroll Flooring, that did the floor, absolutely sensational. So apart from the floor, everything else is down to me. I'm just a keen DIYer, so you'll see the setup. Please, in the uh, comments below, if you think things can be improved or any comments you've got, please put them in the comments below. Uh, that will be greatly appreciated. So let's crack on, show you the front of the van first, as I said, and then we'll go to the back. So this is the van. This is a 2017 Ford Transit Custom M Sport. It's the double cab long wheelbase so this is actually called an l2h1 dciv which means double cab in van so the reason for buying this van uh, one is the looks again as i said i think the especially with mobile detailing your van reflects your business depending on where you want your business to sit within the marketplace also because of the expense of the van this is actually now our second vehicle as well, hence the extra seats in the back. The vehicle itself has got OZ Racing alloy wheels as standard. So this vehicle is completely standard. Original uh, sticker kit. It's got the M Sport body kit on the vehicle as well. Inside we've got the M Sport steering wheel, full leather interior, and the interior that I wanted was the two captain's chairs rather than a uh, driver's seat and then a double seat, which is another configuration that you can get. Original limited edition mats. So originally this was the uh, limited version of the Ford Transit Custom. In the back, again, full leather. Really nice setup. So the front seats are heated in this particular model, which is great, especially for the winter. So all these M Sport or MSRT vehicles are numbered and there's the original plaque telling me which number this vehicle is. So this vehicle spec is also the tailgate which is a quite a rare spec. Normally they come with what's called barn doors which is two doors at the back. 
important for me though that we had the tailgate version because that acts as some form of uh, weather protection especially when it rains so we can do vehicle mats that type of thing uh, under the tailgate most of the recovery vehicles the transits and uh, VW transporters in the UK have this tailgate version for that same reason so um, the mechanics can work underneath we've got magnetic signs as well on three sides to the vehicle and the magne magnetic signs have been printed on a anthracite or dark grey background to try and blend in with the vehicle as much as possible a couple of reasons for the magnetic signs one is I want to keep this van as original as possible and the second one uh, is a customer preference won't go into any details but they one particular customer wants wanted me to have magnetic signs I can remove rather than the vehicle all logoed up and easily to spot nice body kit on the back with those twin exhaust outlets false obviously as most vehicles are this vehicle has also got a reversing camera as well as um, parking sensors so as you can see with the tailgate up we've got lots of space to work in at the back of the vehicle right so this is the important bit obviously when this vehicle came to us it was completely empty in the back so first thing you'll notice is this which is a bumper protector which I've made so this unclips and folds down and protects the bumper from hoses or any scrapes so one of the things about a mobile van is the roadside uh, traffic that you can get so people stopping when you're doing a detail especially on a main road uh, to get information off you and one of the issues when you open the back doors is that if you, any advertising you've got on the back of the vehicle obviously gets lost because it's in the air so what I decided to do with this instead of just a vinyl sheet which it was originally this is an old Pilates gym mat from Decathlon, quite cheap, about three or four pounds, which I've coated or covered a vinyl banner. So the banner was 15 pounds off eBay. So for less than 20 quid, we've got some nice advertising at the back of the vehicle people can see as they drive past as well as a nice protector as well for that uh, expensive bumper and just at the base and I'll put some still images in as well this is actually a false floor so this is a floating floor the original floor for the van is underneath this one of the reasons for doing that possibly the only reason for doing that is so that everything can get attached to this false floor and then once this vehicle stops being a valeting vehicle everything can be cleared out and there are no extra screw holes or drill holes in the vehicle at all anywhere it's even got its original panelling which is next to useless if you're going to use it as a builder's uh, van or as a work van but I'm keeping it as it is none of this homemade furniture is actually attached or drilled into the side of the vehicle at all it's all fastened in from the false floor and also the anchor points which are scattered around uh, something like a Ford Transit which I'll show you in a bit Right, so the basic setup 
On the left hand side we've got all the bulky kit like the buckets, the vac, the extractor and some chemicals as well as the caddy at the top which has got all, our, all my interior uh, tools in as well. At the back 350 litre baffled water tank which is both strapped into the um, anchor points and there are brackets surrounding the um, water tank which are fastened into that false floor. On this side we've got paint correction stuff, we've got a, a small steamer, electrical cable, the microfiber towels. This bit, and again I'll put some still images in, was actually a shoe cupboard which I stole from the porch much to my wife's annoyance. So basically that was stacked, those two bits there were stacked one on top of the other so I cut it in half. The one thing I liked about the shoe cupboard style approach is it's got a really slim profile so it doesn't stick out too far from the uh, vehicle and the drawers pull out make things really handy to, uh, to access. In the centre we've got our um, generator and that is on a homemade slide out tray again which I'll show you in a bit and at the back there is a um, power washer so this is uh, just a standard Karcher power washer the plate at the back of the compressor is there actually for a Kranzel power washer but I came a little bit unstuck on one particular job where I couldn't actually get access into the property with the vehicle and the distance between the vehicle and the car that needed washing which was trapped in by a skip builders were there was too far for the kit, for the uh, hose from the Kranzel to reach so I've swapped out the Kranzel for this portable version just for now until we can work out a better system probably going to go with a 30 meter hose reel connected somewhere within the back so that's the reason for the what is really a backup uh, power washer which is the uh, Karcher Right, so I think we'll start on the right hand side of the vehicle and move our way across. So as I said, this started life as a uh, shoe cabinet. Cut it in half, made a frame, attached it all in. I've also adapted the inside of the shoe cabinet. So obviously the shoes just slid in here. So we've got bulk chemicals and sprays in the bottom section. All this is for the interior, so this is the um, the mini interior vacuum fittings. So you've got the hose, various other attachments to get in some really tight spaces within the vehicle. We then got some detailing brushes as well. One of the issues with any vehicle, really, any sort of van, is the wheel arch and that is a lot of wasted space and I've tried to make the most of that space by including a small pull out drawer at the bottom which I'll show you now. Right so this is a drawer that I've made to go around the wheel arch to create some extra storage. So in here I've got compounds, polishes, um, engine degreaser, things like um, pink stuff for use on exhaust so this is just basically a uh, an oven paste oven cleaning paste so lots of different things in this particular drawer as I said it's like a, a um, letter C and that just slides in like that and then everything is locked down either with these L brackets just simple locking system or this um, just basic bolt system for this particular one.
I'm not sure you can see at the back there, hopefully you can, but that's the valve for the tank sat just at the back there. I've got a couple of extra buckets and the top one is for cleaning uh, alloys and tyres so that has some cleaning equipment within there as well. So they're just sat on top of a five metre length of garden hose which is attached to the tank and that comes out and attaches onto the carcher. Works really well. Right so the pull out drawer for the um, generator. So I was quoted, I think one company quoted me 550 pounds, the other company quoted me 750 pounds to have a, obviously a professional pull out uh, shelf system for the generator. And the reason for bringing the generator out like this is that the exhaust is obviously away from the vehicle. So no fumes go back into the vehicle at all. And with the, generator out it gives me better access then to that small drawer that c-shaped drawer you saw at the bottom of the unit on the right hand side and it's just more convenient when it comes out obviously and the um the pressure washer or the power washer is off the back i've got access to the pull cord to actually start the um, generator itself Right, so how I made this uh, homemade shelf, the frame is just basically um, steel bar and angle iron which was cut to size and then welded for me by a fantastic company called Northwest Customs here in the northwest of the UK. Really good friends of mine, Ian Henderson and Jake Henderson, did a fantastic job with that. The sliders off eBay, so these are 100 kg uh, limit sliders from China, fairly cheap, uh, needed a little bit of work to make sure that they were robust enough, uh, but they cost about £15, so the, the, the total cost of this particular shelf, including these cheap uh, shed locks, was about £90. Obviously I got the um, welding done as a favour, but even with somebody welding it, you're probably looking about 120 quid to do that yourself. And it works perfectly. I've already forgot to bolt it in once, drove down the road. It was literally just 50 meters. Realized, stopped and created a little bit of damage to our ceramics detailing um, bumper protector but it's just one of those things so I just have to remember every single time to lock this into place. So moving over to this side I'll get some of the equipment out to show you but basically we've got the platform so this is a standing platform for vans and large SUVs like Range Rovers uh, to stand on while I'm cleaning them underneath chemicals in here uh, vacuum in the center and the extractor and extra cloths on the right hand side professional buckets on the top i'll show you those the reason why we use those and not standard buckets and our caddy which is used for interior detailing so with the platform taken away Got some bulk chemicals here, so this is Red 7, uh, iron fallout remover. We've got some compounds for paint correction, snow foam. So here's a good tip. So this is our snow foam uh, applicator which goes onto our karcher. But the Demon Shine bottles, uh, and most of these bottles will actually have the same screw thread fitting as the top of the uh, snow foam so what I normally do is when we're finished with these bottles I keep them and then we could just quickly swap the head of the snow foam applicator over onto different chemicals uh, so there's no need to pour that chemical out and then replace it with a, um, another chemical. Compounds again, bulk, tire shine and then two garden sprayers. So these are from a company in the UK called Wilco, which is a like a discount store. 
Uh, ideal, absolutely ideal, these five litre uh, sprays. This particular one is a um, hydrophobic layer, so pre-wax, and then in the other one we've got APC, or all-purpose cleaner. So in the centre we've got, as I say, a wet and, uh, a vac. That's a wet and dry vac, but we only use it for dry um, vacuuming now. It's just a pain in the neck to change the uh, filters when you want to swap over from wet to dry. So we just have a, a dry vac now, and then in the other section uh, we've got an extractor. Just some cloths in the last section, no need to get those out. So in the bottom one, in the blue bag, we've got cloths that we reuse. And then obviously in the top, uh, Kirkland microfiber cloths, which we use uh, for new applications. So on the top, we'll work our way from here in. So in here, we've got extra pads for the DA polisher. This is a quite a handy piece of kit, I think from either Lidl or Aldi's, which is for windscreens, for cleaning windscreens. So we use this for large vehicles like vans or large SUVs just to get right down into the corners. This is our caddy, so this is actually an old um, ladder caddy, so the way it's shaped here this actually fits onto the rung of a ladder, uh, so it's, it's for decorators really. Drilled some extra holes, got some um, detailing brushes in there and then lots of equipment inside which I'll, I'll go through in a not too much detail, I'll just show you one or two bits of kit. So that's really handy. So we take that to the side of the vehicle when we're doing interior detailing and everything we need for that interior detail is sat in this caddy. So these are our professional Kentucky uh, cleaning buckets wheeled buckets at the front we've got some spare sponges sponges just to put them in place somewhere to store and also uh, stops any movement really with regards to the buckets although the buckets are fastened at the back as well so they won't actually go anywhere so i'll get these buckets out now and i'll show you why we use this type of bucket right so our wheeled kentucky cleaning buckets so these are professional janitorial buckets on wheels obviously so they're nice and easy to uh, manoeuvre. So why do we use these and not the standard detailing buckets, the large detailing buckets and then the wheel dolly underneath? The first thing is price. So a standard large bucket from one of the detailing companies costs around 11 or 12 pounds in the UK. The dolly which goes underneath to make it a wheel bucket will cost anywhere from £25 to £40, making it quite an expensive setup. These professional janitorial buckets, these Kentucky style buckets, are about £14 each and that is for the entire set. The second thing is that on the inside of these buckets there are um, raised measuring indicators so whenever we are measuring out fluids with chemicals we've got a really good indication there of the amount of uh, fluids that we need the standard large buckets you get from these detailing places i've not seen one that actually has a measuring system either on the inside or the outside they might be there but the standard ones i haven't seen any and then the third thing, and a really important thing for us, I don't know if you can see that, let me see if I can get the camera better. Right, so in these Kentucky buckets, there is actually a drain in the bottom, which is there. So that means, that when we have finished with the detail, we've got dirty water in there, we open the bottom drain and then we power wash to get all of that dirt out of the bucket. The problem with these large, uh, very expensive buckets in my opinion from these detailing companies is it's basically a bucket. 
So what you have to do with the dirty water, you have to tip it up and pour it out. When the buckets start to get a little bit used and they get some scrapes on the inside of the bucket, all that grit that's in the bottom of the bucket is actually being poured out the side of the standard buckets and that grit can embed in little scrapes within the wall of, within the wall of the bucket so that when you then put some fresh water in that gets washed back down again so you've always got grit within your water with these kentucky buckets where we've got a uh, a drain at the bottom we can power wash down and up. we know that all of that grit goes out from the bottom never comes into contact with the side of the bucket so obviously with these we use a three bucket system if you like so we've got the main buckets for the uh, body of the vehicle the red one is clean water and the green one is our soapy water and then the third bucket which you've seen inside um, the transit is for wheels and the very bottom of the vehicle that has say a body kit on or something like that we never let the actual washing mitt come into contact with the very bottom of the of the vehicle even on a two two bucket safe wash all right so just one final thing on this side of the vehicle with the kentucky buckets removed and these are the clips which hold those kentucky kentucky buckets in place and these are actually from a uh, garden hose uh, with a wall mount and these two are the wall mounts which i didn't use so i've utilized these for the buckets again on this side we've got the same problem uh, with this vehicle with regard to wasted space on top of the wheel arch and down the side so i've built this little compartment and in here is the hose and attachments for our vacuum so that folds away quite nicely in there and it also gives access to the anchor point which this uh, side of the vehicle this this um, piece of furniture is actually fastened to so if we ever need to remove this we've got access in here now to uh, remove this from the side of the vehicle that's our little secret compartment Right, so as I said, let me just run through a couple of bits. I'm not going to bore you to death too much with this, but just a few quirky bits which you may or may not be familiar with. So I use almost everything in here is for the interior of the vehicle. These are baby uh, or bottle cleaners, and these are absolutely ideal for cup holders. So a little bit of all-purpose cleaner on the end into the cup holder just a quick um, mix round and then these you might not be able to see it on the camera but they are there's kind of, there's grooves in here and that picks up a lot of dirt really quick process for that these are from Aldi and these are basically just wash they're like marigold gloves but they're for sort of washing pans and they have this these plastic needles on absolutely ideal for pet hair so I basically just wear one of these on a detail quickly scrape or rub along the um, carpet and a lot of the pet hair and grounding dirt will come out with these if Aldi still have these obviously depending on what time of year you're watching this video but inquire or look online these are absolutely ideal for pet hair same thing goes for the squeegees so this is a small squeegee for I think these are for shower doors again a little bit of all-purpose clean on the end onto the carpet scrape it pet hair will come away if you can cut down the time that you spend especially on hoovering and getting up all of these um, all of the bits then that makes obviously your business more profitable same for these again I think these are from Aldi's these are for again cleaning pots same needle effect 
on this rubber matting absolutely ideal um, especially down the, so I use these actually for down the side of the chairs to get any bits up from the carpet there what else have we got really stiff narrow brush that's for where the carpet actually comes from the floor and up the side uh, of the center console especially into the corners that will get a lot of debris out what else have we got again another device for pet hair so pet hair really and grounding dirt is the the biggest pain as far as i'm concerned and the one that if you can work out ways to actually get that up as soon as possible you are going to be more profitable because you're going to spend less time doing it invisible glass the best products i've tried for cleaning glass been sticking with this now for about six months absolutely absolutely ideal completely street free and then another thing you might not have so these are small pedal bin um, bags so whenever we clean a car out with regard to the um, inside the doors we always put valuables and stuff in a bag and leave that on the passenger seat so there you go that's our little setup as i said almost all of the interior of the vehicle has been fitted out by myself i am not a professional joiner just a keen diyer so anybody can do it and i've just tried to make this as professional and well equipped as possible as i said at the start of the video please put some comments below your input would be greatly appreciated and thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel it's a brand new channel so the more subscribers we get the better Thank you.